the same technology as LHCV, LHC, essentially. So you have the microwave cavities uh, working at 500 megahertz. Uh, we have um, pen magnets. Uh, in fact, these uh, these are so-called fourth-generation storage rings because they have a special arrangement of magnets. It's called the multi-band acromat, uh, different from the typical two-band acromats that other storage rings have. is where these uh, three accelerators, the two accelerators are the booster and the storage ring. Then we have a LINAC that is in the same level as, as the storage ring. The experimental stations basically they take radiation coming out of this port. So there you see two holes in each one of the exits. The outer hole is for alignment. There's nothing coming out of there from the thermal synchrotron. The, the, the one in the below is where the synchrotron radiation comes from into the experimental stations that are basically is called in this hole. For each one of these parts, there can be an experimental station. So now, many so we have 40 ports like that. Now, the energy of the photons that are emitted by bending magnets once the electron trajectory is bent depends on the magnetic field and on the energy of the electrons. It's a broad spectrum that, let's say, is more intense. It's a very broad spectrum with a certain, let's say, a blob centered in an energy that we call critical energy. For X-rays, hard X-rays, like 100 kilo electron volts, the kind of X-ray that can penetrate one centimeter of steel, then it's another kind of magnet. It's not here. If it was, we couldn't be here because it, they are going to be installed later. It, these are 3.2 Tesla magnets, very strong magnets, dangerous. You cannot walk with stuff like we are doing right now. And these are very strong magnets. And the critical energy of these magnets is 20 kilo electron volts. So typically, the spectrum is broad and you can extract X rays with uh, up to six times the critical energy. Let's say it's, you still have a valuable flux, uh, about six times above or below. So these magnets we will use, the radiation from this, what we call super bands, we will use for X-ray tomography beam lines or high X-ray diffraction. And inside this experimental hutch, then we have the last mirror, which is an horizontally focusing mirror. The sample will stay. So then we have a big granite table that we have a goniometer where the crystal with a few tens of microns is, is held and is rotated around the focus beam. So the focus point at this point, the focus spot is going to be more or less here where I'm holding. So it's at about 1.4 meters, roughly. And with a, 10 micron spot. Then the beam is focused in the sample here. This crystal diffracts radiation, and then we have an X-ray detector over here that collects the diffraction. This rotates the crystal around the, the, its, its axis. You collect all those diffraction patterns. From the diffraction pattern, there's a numerical processing. You extract the three-dimensional structure of the protein, and then either it has something binding to it, some, let's say, fragment of a drug, or a drug, or another protein, and that's where it, what is studied. And what you want to do is create a drug that will basically kill the bacteria, or uh, you kill the virus, or stop its reproduction. So you have to study the mechanism, mechanics of reproduction of this. It's like uh, uh, fitting uh, the key and the keyhole, and you don't know which either one of them. So you have to attempt several of them, but they have uh, angstroms of, of size, and you have to try many attempts. These are basically the attempts of the drugs. And once you find a hit, you say, okay, this connects very well. It, 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 I don't know, fills in the hole where the DNA goes in or something and prevents the bacteria from reproducing. And okay, this is a one step towards creating a drug.
If everything goes as planned, uh, the storage ring should be ready for commissioning in May.